again, I'm having issues getting the lights around me working, but uh, for a, a litmus test, I figure video games are a good way to do it. Receiving me, my microphone. Can you hear me? Mic needs more volume. Uh, is it that my mic is low or my game audio is too high? That's the question. Microphone is pretty much at maximum. Okay, how's this? Move the microphone closer to me. Game audio is too high, I thought so. Mind you, I have I have had the mic swung out of the way pretty far, so. I'll bring the mic closer and I'll drop the game audio. Where's my headphone audio? Oh yeah, my headphone audio is way too high. loud and clear. Yeah, OB OBS is really picky. I'm not I'm not running OBS, I'm running XSplit, but again they are really finicky. So yeah, let's play a little bit of uh, Valiant Hearts before uh, I've got, I've got guests coming over in about half an hour or so. I just figured I'd kill some time by playing August this and see how it goes. After the assassination of Prince Franz Ferdinand of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the German Empire declares war on Russia. Because of established alliances, France is preparing for the conflict. A few hours after the announcement of the general mobilization, German civilians living in France are asked to leave the country. Carl is one of them. I, mean, I have played this before, and I'm a big war history nut. So, uh, yeah, this is this is always fun. I, I like this game. I wish they were more like it. The art style is also beautiful. Tonight, being a Saturday, I have some nice scotch. I have the uh, High Commissioner Scot blended scotch whiskey, um, original Scottish. It's uh, it's pretty nice, especially something called the High Commissioner. <laughs> so, have a little bit of a drink, a bit of a game, and uh, a bit a bit of history dear to my heart, which is. Uh, World War One history and along with World War Two. A few days after Carl was oh, deported, my family's lost was family members to both and wars, and uh, as well. yeah, it's really interesting. A heavy my 303 was rifle was also dated 1918. It was used in Australia, like sort of so from years. World War One up until uh, 1950s ish. Like Overall volume sounded pretty good. I mean, this is a test stream. I do, I do need some feedback on that.
whole volume's low compared with other YouTube. Okay, so my mic's low and the game volume's low. How do I boost that? I noticed that with one of my previous recordings, the overall was a bit low. Okay, broadcast. Oh, I think there's a broadcast volume there. Let's see how that sounds. Default. Okay, I don't want to overdrive it too much. using XSplit. Yeah, I'm using XSplit. My broadcast volume and microphone volume are at maximum. So I'm just, I'm just messing around with stuff. I kind of want to use this to do um, live like equipment repairs, that kind of thing. And do the occasional game stream, especially old school games and historic stuff like this. This is a game that's something I've been meaning to do for a long time. It's a fantastic game. Well, puzzle, puzzle platformer. Oops. I'm going to pick up the bugle. issues I may need some kind of mic boost but again I'm using a USB headset uh, Turtle Beach uh, Recon 320 it may just be an underpowered or inferior unit I don't really know Does this pack include the little white flag? I think you've got the wrong war. World War One. The French fought valiantly. They actually did a fantastic job. Honestly, I don't think the French get anywhere near enough credit as they deserve. World War Two. Well, they made the smart decision. At least Paris wasn't bombed into the ground, and the Eiffel Tower still stands. Imagine if they put up a resistance. <laughs> German bombers would have leveled everything. I'm not a big fan of surrender or anything like that, but sometimes you kind of got to make the smart decision not to get everyone blown up. Fiftieth Regiment Infantry. There we go. My dear Marie, we are on our way to Paris. The atmosphere here is strangely cheerful. Now I hope that the harvest goes well. Relying Noise floor is pretty now, high. Fifty hertz hum. Gracious and charitable people. I'll write again as soon as I get my assignment. Oh, is this using my webcam? Please my little grandson for me. Oh, I think I have a problem. Ah, and you just... In Paris, trying to Jimmy McPhee, you are exactly right. My webcam is still energised. I think it's using my webcam mic, which is why there's a 50 hertz hum. 
is true. That camera has a uh, problem with grounding. Google Hangouts cuts out the 50 hertz hum with its noise filtering, but not uh, XSplit. Okay, I might need to change a few things. I apologise if you hear some pops and bangs as I plug in and unplug, but uh, we'll see. Okay, do you receive me now? I think I've been using the wrong microphone. Ah. <laughs> that explains the low mic levels. Now, is it too high? Like, compared to with regular YouTube videos. Yeah, the, hum, the hum's gone. I know where the hum's gone because I was using the wrong freaking microphone. I might be vadering. <laughs> oh god. Alright, I'll put my. Here we go. Okay, how's that? There we go. That should sound a lot better. I've just dropped the um, mic gain by 15% and move the mic away from my mouth because apparently I was using the wrong damn one <laughs> a little quiet <laughs> so compared with the game game volume's alright Because you don't need too much game volume, you mostly want to hear me, so I think we'll put back up to where it originally was, which is about 95%. Sort of back where I originally had it. You shouldn't be able to hear the road. You might be getting a bit of fan noise from the computer, but this mic's more directional than the other one. Oh, Tristan, yeah, some of those old Dell laptops. A lot of early laptops, you get a lot of noise from the fan, from the hard drive, and when noise cancellation cuts out, you just hear the whole machine working away. Not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, the fans to the left of me, and uh, that's about it. It's just the uh, power supply fan. Won't let me go any further. What do I need? Alright, food dispatch 1914. Got food. <laughs> No, I cannot progress that. Oh, that's right, this guy wants wine. I've played this before, so I apologize. I'm not doing it a full, like, 100% rum. I've played this before.
Ah, ah. dis-moi, elle pas baptisé Yeah, it is. It's the uh, the steam whistle cord. Okay, so this guy likes music. And we've got the band. Oh, it's a combo. That's right. So we've got the, we've got the snare drum, we've got the tuba. <laughs> if you haven't already played this game, I apologise for spoiling it. I've got a World War I 8mm uh, label rifle coming for me fairly soon. That's going to be fun to clean up because apparently it's pretty messy. August 21st, 1914, Emil's regiment was sent to fight against the 71st German Division led by Baron von Dorf. The general cheer of the first hours dissipated into the fear of first combat. This kind of uh, ideology only lasts so long until you run into uh, machine guns and other modernized equipment. I'm sure they did have flag bearers in World War One, especially in the early days. Like this Marie is 1914. Chayon. 1914, everything was like from classic. From the 150th Infantry Regiment, like, was wounded kind of like by enemy Civil fire War era kind of cavalry charges and that kind of thing. Been Things were going fairly enemy. quick until everyone dug in, and that's Hopefully, when it got messy. You shall receive news from him soon. A really good documentary to watch is called Apocalypse French, World War One. Originally from America, it's on YouTube. Enlisted voluntarily uh, it's on, in the you French can buy it on DVD. At the it's well worth it, along with uh, Apocalypse bravery, World War Two. Hit a man already devastated by the war's effects. A man with one sole obsession: punish those who had destroyed his life. It was at the Battle of the Marne that <laughs> Freddy finally picked up the trail of the Long regiment Z1. commanded by Like the Baron video of playing Doom on the ATM. That was kind of fun. <laughs> 
I do like the uh, the doomed ATM. I've got to uh, dust that off. And the guy who was going to do the graphics and everything lost his job before he could do the custom printed uh, vinyl graphics. But uh, I think we can do some like hand painted kind of stuff on it. And finish it off. Maybe uh, take it to a swap meet one day and uh, just allow people to play with it for free. We just use tokens. I think we'll change the um, modify the coin acceptor just to take washes or something like that. things. There's a lot of information in this. generator going. Uh, the generator needs... Uh, I haven't tried energising it yet. I'm hoping it's going to take more than... Uh, or not, not more than just disconnecting the bad one, but I think it will... Uh, it might pose some problems. <laughs> the the coil barbed wire? Yeah, I, I don't know about the um, the science of the barbed wire in the First World War, but uh, it certainly is ma man killer barbed wire. The stuff you see on the battlefields even today coming up out of the dirt, it is man killer barbed wire. It's really nasty. exactly want to take over the world, they just want a bit more living space. But uh, today, with modern weapons, that doesn't happen. It's not going to happen. It's either going to be really quick and really bloody, or it's just not going to happen. Or it's going to go full nucleoid. <laughs> I am not entirely sure. I have got no idea. I mean, YouTube is definitely not as fun, and fun or effective as it used to be. And I've had numerous strikes for things, even things I generally do, or this content that I literally own myself. It's getting pretty difficult. I'm just going to mess around with it. It's a hobby. That's all it is, it's just a hobby. Yeah, straight barbed wire is fine. 
coiled barbed wire takes up, it's more dense, but you can certainly cut through it. And actually, it springs back. When you cut it, it springs back and makes it hard. Just like straight, so there's really not a lot of advantage that I can see. I think the coils just make it easier to see in the video game. And bolt cutters, again, you get some decent quality bolt cutters and it'll work fine. Uh, there's also an adapter that I'm getting for my uh, 303 rifle, which has a, uh, a duck, like a duck bill attachment on it. You, you, you actually fire a rifle round through the wire cutter. The rifle round shears, the, the bullet shears the wire, and you keep going without having to stop. Put your rifle away, get your bolt, your, your wire cutter there, cut the wire, then get your rifle back out again. In this case, you basically just push it up against the wire, pull the trigger. The bullet severs the wire, you rack another round in the chamber and you're ready to go. That's a British invention that works quite well. I can blow this guy up with a grenade. Coiled barbed wire would certainly be nastier to get stuck in. I guess that's the point of it. Straight barbed wire, is still, you've still got to cut through it, but coiled... Imagine coiled razor wire. <laughs> Imagine trying to dig, dig your way or cut your way through coiled razor wire and getting stuck in it. That's kind of... I think Tristan Taylor has the best idea behind the coiled barbed wire. Even though it wasn't used initially in the beginning of World War I, coils and overlapping coils just mean you, you get tangled and you keep getting tangled. That, that's got to be a bad thing, especially when you're wearing thick webbing, um, canvas gear, stuff that those, those big, long, very long barbs get caught in. This is an agricultural barbed wire. This is man-killer barbed wire. Oh, that's right, machine gun guy.
Yes, loads of action for a cartoon game. It's actually a really, really well made game. Anyway. My friend's here for the uh, afternoon bit of engine tinkering and that kind of stuff. And I'm going to call it a night, unfortunately. I wish I could keep playing, but... Uh, I have guests over now. It's been a Saturday night. I'm thinking I might do this more on Sundays, but I uh, hope you enjoyed it. This is a really fun game. I highly recommend buying it. Uh, it's based on real history. Yes, it's a it's a cartoon platformer, but it, the actual um, sequence of events and timeline is based on real history. It works pretty dang good. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and... Uh, Stay tuned for more.